This time on TNT, a special Happy Days edition of Plot or Not. We play the top five dog days jams. Plus, what happened when Jer hit a golf ball into Donald Trump's hair? That's all coming up right now on TNT. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. One fifty-five, bud. Twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock. Yep. Yep. Uh. Yep. Uh. Uh. Woo. Uh. Was yeah. this, this was 1955. We're cooking, bud. You know what it is? What? It's Malted's. Well, did you watch Leave It to Beaver as a, Did you watch Leave It to Beaver as a kid? Not really. Like I'm certainly aware of it, but I didn't ever watch it. Well, it was before our time, bud. It was, but it was a uh, CKVR, the Barry station that I got as a kid, played it every day at noon. So I, I watched it every day. So I watched every episode like 30 times. Of Leave It to Beaver? Was that on in the 50s? Uh, I think it was either based on in the late 50s and early 60s. But I think it's based on the 50s more, you know what I mean? I don't know if it... Well, it, it's current, obviously, because the the situations that they go through are pretty of the time, like the cheesy jams they would play, and... They, they, pretty they had, earnest. They had some... They went to some good stuff, though, like the time that uh, they dealt with, like, alcohol abuse, where this guy is like, oh, I'll pick... Can I paint your fence for you? And he's like... The, and the you know Ward Cleaver's like oh no problem come do this and then like the the second day there's nobody there and he's like to Beaver he's like hey hey Beaver do you have anything to drink around here Aww. <laughs> and Beaver's like leaning sure. on the kid <laughs> yeah Beaver's like sure I have some lemonade and he's like nah. <clears throat> I was uh, I was thinking something a little more uh, a little more exciting or whatever. No. Yeah, and he gets show up, brings him to the liquor cabinet, and next thing you know, he's all banged up and like leaves. And the first wave of learned entertainment. Yeah. Beef, did you give that guy painting the fence anything to drink? Yep. And then there's like the there's a, there's nothing that can't be done tomorrow, Beaver. That line, the wow. big slacker line. <laughs> and then the time that they they smoked co- uh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> what? Beaver, Beaver and Larry Mondello, they uh, they they uh, want to see what it's like to smoke because or they because they find this pipe that 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 his dad got <laughs> and they like put coffee in it and smoke it and get and the, it actually the screen gets all like woo <laughs> no and I, yeah I think they actually smoke some ashes of like cigarette ashes. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, from an urn. No, but it goes down. It's like, come on, son, that, you're too young for that. At the end, he's, like, smoking coffee, getting all banged up and stoned with Larry on ashes and coffee. I wonder what happens when you smoke coffee in a pipe. It probably wakes you up the same as I would a say. cup of coffee, right? <laughs> That's something. I assume... Do people smoke coffee like in a pipe? Imagine trying to get away with anything <laughs> like that on a network now. A kid uh, doing something racy. I tell you, smoking coffee would smell a hell of a lot better, right? Yeah. No, you, you don't. You wouldn't see that anymore. But even remember, uh, Al and the family, same thing. Like uh, Will us getting caught smoking weed? Any? <laughs> on, all in the family? No, sorry, on different strokes. Different strokes. And he comes. He's like. Willis, what the hell are you doing? How long have you been doing this? And he's all, about 10 minutes, all stoned. Acting stoned? <laughs> yeah, with the joint going. Or like the pretend Hollywood joint. And then the crowd going, ooh. Yeah, ooh, for sure. Go to commercial. Remember that? Remember because I was saying that guy... <laughs> That loves that about TV and wanted to talk about it that time when the other guy wanted to sleep. The ooh moments in television. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. Quiet. Go to commercial. Come back. Nothing. I associate that with family ties maybe the most. Oh, yeah. They would really get social on that, right? Some crazy stuff. 
Sha la la la. And I just so, picture I picture that guy looking at you like, really, man? Yeah. Really do that? Yeah, Michael Gross, not feeling it. Um. Okay, so this is one fifty-five. You yeah. played Rock Around the Clock because that is a song from 1955. The birth of rock and roll happening right around the 55 era. But it's also the theme song for Happy Days. Yeah. Well, I right? think... Yes. Yeah. boop a bap boo doo boo bap I think the truth of it is, is the early ones had it, and then they switched it to a similar jam. But I could be wrong on both accounts. We should find that out. So wait a sec. These days are all. Was that a was that a custom theme for them? Yeah. That's not part that's of one happy o'clock, two days. o'clock, three o'clock rock. No, no, that's what I'm saying. But uh. I'm I'm trying to think that originally maybe it was just rock around the clock. Yours and mine, happy days. Oh, that's... I have. Uh, so I've prepared <laughs> an edition of Plot or Not, the Happy Days version. Okay. So I have 10 plots, or are they, from Happy Days episodes. And you'll recall that in the early going, it was quite squeaky clean and earnest. Yeah. And then it, of course, is the origin of the phrase jump the shark because of the episode where Fonzie tried to jump the shark. So in latter years, they did get a little wacky. Yeah. So all you have to do is answer plot or not to the following 10 plots. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I'm like Ready? Going in. Uh, yeah. Potsy fixes Richie up with Mary Lou Mulligan, who has a questionable reputation. Plot or not? <laughs> that that sounds like a plot. Are you sure? Happy day. Let me hear it again. One more time. Potsy fixes Richie up with Mary Lou Mulligan, who has a questionable reputation. <laughs> I mean, it could be every episode. Yeah, of Happy I'll Days. say I'm gonna say plot. That's a plot. Yeah, and I, you got, you got me. Potsy wrangles Richie, an invitation to his first bachelor party. Again, Potsy wrangles Richie, an invitation to his first bachelor party. That sounds like a plot too, big time. That is a plot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, the the, uh, the versions of the song, yeah, in the first two seasons, it was uh, Rock Around by Bill Haley. By Bill Haley. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then so they re recorded it. wrong for they, making that connection. But they re recorded in 75 with different lyrics for both the opening and closing credits for seasons three to 10. But there is the Jim Haas version, which is just a Happy Days jam, which is crazy because it's a totally crazy. different, totally different song writing deal but it so is close. these days are all yeah that's that's it's, that's happy days it is yeah. that's that's not yes. rock around the clock and, yes at all yeah there's no there's no d de- these days are ha- yeah that's all rock around the clock oh. so now we okay, know ready yeah i am richie and potsy sneak out of the house to watch fonzie in an illegal drag race oh that's definitely i've seen that one that's a plot that's a plot oh yeah i remember that one I was just telling you before we started that I saw an interview with Bill Hader and uh, what's his name? The guy who plays the Fonz, Henry Winkler. Winkler, yeah. And his first audition for the part of the Fonz, he did it with a British accent. Which Because I guess all what? it said in the script was that he was like a mysterious relative who showed up in, in new in town. Meet me in my office, mate. Can hey, you imagine the, what a different box. show that would have been? <laughs> Smashing his hand on the jukebox. An idea. Hear my song. Smash you. <laughs> Happy days. We'll be right back. <laughs> we are um, right. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> Richie. Not so good, Al. Hey, remember you throw out that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come watch me in my scooter race. Hey, instead of... It's like, instead of, come check, I'm going to my office. He's like, come see me in the loo. <laughs> <laughs> Can I talk to you for a mo in the loo? <laughs> um, Richie receives an unexpected education when he encourages Fonzie to re-enroll at Jefferson High. 
<laughs> he has his two fingers up and Richie's like, have a seat, lad, instead of sit on it. <laughs> have a seat, hey, with his two fingers up. That becomes up. his new catchphrase. <laughs> instead of sit on it. And the two fingers up instead of the thumb. Have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, do the do the plot Apostrophe again. A V. A seat. <laughs> have a seat. <laughs> Can I suggest you have a seat? <laughs> instead of I, it's I instead of A. <laughs> it would be a totally different show. <laughs> He's a big tough. I kind of love that that was his instinct, though. Like, all right, I'm going to do something crazy. Get their attention. Well, that's awesome. Um, that's so good. Okay, Richie receives an unexpected education when he encourages Fonzie to re-enroll at Jefferson High. What, first part again, sorry. Richie receives an unexpected education. Oh, that sounds like a plot. That is a plot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's a little wacky. <clears throat> the Cunninghams decide to build a family bomb shelter and try to keep it a secret. <laughs> that's a little out there. For, for I mean, that's close to the jump to shark, but that I would have heard about that. That's definitely a not. That's a plot. No, it's not really. Yes, it is. That's, <laughs> that's a real show. It was of that, a time. That must have been right before Joni loves Chachi. Then they decide to build a family bomb shelter. Oh. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Joni, after Joni rejects his marriage proposal, Chachi swings into action to change her mind. That sounds like a plot for sure. That's a plot. Yeah, because then you're on fire. Because that they swung it into that that. Dum dum Scott Bale. That was the last time he had a show. Hey oh. <laughs> Fonzie turns his back on the Cunninghams when they put their house up for sale. Oh, what is say again? The Gino voice. Can't you picture him talking? Yeah. He's all sad, takes it personally. <laughs> say it again. I don't care what you do. <laughs> Joe Vine. Yeah. So read it as Joe Vine. When Joe Vine lists the Cunningham's house for sale, <laughs> Fonzie uh, turns his back on the Cunningham's. Uh, that sounds like a plot, kind of. That's a plot. Yeah. Because they got to have uh, Fonzie turn heel for an episode. Yep. Okay, three left. Richie okay. and Potsy have to fulfill six dares to earn their jackets. When they try to become members of the Demon Club. I've seen that one. That's a plot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I left the crazies for last. Fonzie and Roger are stranded on a mountain when the plane carrying them loses power. That's that's a plot too, man. I remember that one. That's a plot. Yeah, I remember the Roger guy. Who's Roger? It was the new handsome guy they tried to bring in to lure like new viewers. No way. Yes. Yeah, Instead look. of an adorable seven-year-old kid, they brought in another gorgeous guy. <laughs> yeah. What's his name again? Roger? Roger. Yeah. You gotta there was a him. lot of Roger in the latter years. Oh, my gosh. Like, Roger gets some tips from Fonzie to pick up ladies. <laughs> Okay, here's a good one. You ready? Yeah. Last one. The gang tries to arrange a meeting between Fonzie and the Lone Ranger. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just looked at the picture of Roger. <laughs> and you have to look. You got to I remember he's like big, like, small American hunk guy. No. <laughs> With the big feathery hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> From the 70s? Google Roger oh Happy Days. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait a sec. Uh, yeah, it's that guy. He's, he's that guy. Yeah, Ted he's McGinley. The, yes. Yeah. He was on um, uh, 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 the, with the show with the Bundys, the shoe salesman. <coughs> you know what I think it was? That was when Ron Howard was like, I think I'm going to start making movies and 
He's, he didn't want to do it anymore, right? What was the, oh, pig? What was that show? Oh, be, oh sorry, because Ron Howard went to college. That's how they got, he left the show, and that's when they brought in Roger. The pig is uh, the stupid uh, uh, married with children. That was that Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Wow, Ted McGinley played Roger. That's crazy. That's classic. He was so um, 70s gorgeous. Exactly. He was like the male Farrah Fawcett. Crazy. But he, he also knew his way around a joke, as I recall. Yeah. Like, he's pretty funny on Married with Children. I imagine he probably uh, had a few dates in the 70s. I would say. Probably... Probably had a uh, sore member halfway through the to late seventies. Crazy. There's a picture of um, had to hang Fonzie it up. and Roger at the teachers' lockers at Jefferson High, <laughs> and Roger has pictures of like Crystal Gale up in his locker. <laughs> ask, ask me. I'll be that get Roger guy on set, and you be Henry Winkler. Okay. And I'll be I'll be like kind of ailing on a bench. Are you new? No, we're yeah, I'm well into the show. Okay, and are you the actor or you're the yeah. character? No, I'm the actor. And I'm okay. ailing kinda sitting on the bench. Okay. Oh. Hey Ted, you okay, man? Oh my back, man, my back hurts. What's wrong? Oh man, I've been fucking all night. Oh god. <laughs> he was that guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> For sure, right? No? Hey, Ted, are, are you all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my just, back. Sorry, I've been just carrying the show on my shoulders. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy. Um. Okay, so last plot or not. Okay. The gang tries to arrange a meeting between Fonzie and the Lone Ranger. The episode was called Hi, Yo, Fonzie, Away. Wow. Plot that or not. That sounds like right before the actual idea of Jump the Shark. Sounds like a plot. That is a plot. Oof. Wow. Hi, that... yo, Fonzie, <clears throat> away. This little, like, in-depth dive into the latter years really shows, like, that That was probably as far as you can reach as, a, as any show before getting cut off, right? I can't think of another show that did stuff that was that crazy. Yeah, like, uh, why not, like, space aliens? Well, they already that's had... That's not even... That, that's like... <laughs> well, they had... Hey, you know, um... Mork! The Network Stars? Let's do that within the body of our series. Well, Mork debuted on Happy Days, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's kind of weird if you think about how that happened. So, what, who was Mork on Happy Days? Mork! Exactly the same, like Mork for Mork. But how did he get there? <laughs> I don't remember, but he's just like, I ain't Mark, I'm not from your planet. <laughs> <laughs> That's really out there. I know. <laughs> That's so out there. Isn't that crazy? Like, what, what production executive was like, yep, let's do this? Oh, I don't know, man so crazy classic crazy uh, is that that's it eh that's, that's it our... that was 10 you got 9 out of 10 no yeah the one crazy plot with the uh, bunker that was the only one that got me yeah but by the way they were all actual plots that's right that's... I went all plot that's perfect because I mean uh, the, you don't you could make one up and it would probably sound more fake I know. Yeah, right? Like well, how I know. You... When I got to the, like, making a bunker ones and meeting the Lone Ranger, I was like, anything I come up with is not as good as this. Yeah. No. Um, Let's take a break, bud, and then we're going to do the top five dog days jams. Oh, yes. BRB. Fucking right, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Hey, hey, bud. Oh, man. What? Oh. <sighs> You no, know, just you know the, those what? those guys you talk to and they're doing that and they but they don't say anything. You're, oh, 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 oh man, oh. oh, oh. Anyway, uh, you know, like what the hell just Ooh. happened? It's like, are you working out there? No, no, no. Oh. It's just. Uh, uh. Do you know what I noticed? I've been doing a lot lately is exhaling. 
And Carol, every I think every time I do it, she's like, "What?" And I think it just feels really good as a stress release to go like, Whew. "Oh, she thinks you're like, okay, what's the problem?" Yeah. Or like I've been exerting myself for something. Whew. I think I'm just blowing off steam. What if you're like, yeah, yeah. Just I think... blow off steam, you inhale. <gasps> hey, so we finished Mr. D. Yay! Well, not last, yay. Uh, last scene ever. It was quite a week. I saw I saw on the Twitter, and uh, it looked, it was actually pretty emotional. Even from, yeah, it was. like, Jerry said some nice words, and uh, uh, it looked like it was quite a, uh, like, I mean, it looked like, because it, cause it it was how uh, the last it seemed like it was the last few days were probably that kind of vibe right because people were yeah kind of coming and, and going. you know it's it's been summer camp for we did the first pilot 10 years ago so think how many like there have been babies born and marriages and a couple of people have even passed on and just milestone wise in our lives it's been a long run <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, I think it really kind of dawned on people in the last few days. So, but it was nice. They they uh, wrapped up the show in a nice way. And one thing I will definitely say about uh, Jerry is he always fights for the joke. And even if um, even if he has to kind of stop down and figure out why it's not working and try to get it to work better, um, he's not afraid to do that. And that's that's pretty rare. Yeah, because this business is driven in like time. You have to get it done, keep it moving, blah blah blah. It's crazy. So um, I admire that. Yeah, that's that, so. Uh, congratulations on a uh, another great uh, television series. Thank you. That's uh, what three, four in the books now. And now, well, I mean, you've kind of by, by the writing process been involved, but uh, this your now Letter Kenny is kind of a a new thing for you in a way, right? Yeah. Actually on yeah, screen. Yeah, at the end of August, I can't um, say anything about the character that I'm playing. Yeah. But at the end of August, I'm uh, going up to the Suds to um, play a character <laughs> on Letterkenny, and I can't wait. Nice. Love it's gonna it. It's going to be really fun. Joining the crew of wonderful folks. I don't think there's yeah, any... Yeah, really nice folks. And man, like the coverage they've been getting since they've been on Hulu with the... Um, uh, Hollywood Reporter and even Rolling Stone giving it great reviews. As as they should. It's great television. And yeah, uh, sure it's is. different. There's no... That's what happens when it's... And that's why shows break, I think, in America because there is a formula that's that's on television in America, sitcom-wise, or television show. Like, it, you have to fit such a mold. That yeah. there, a, a show like Letterkenny could never just be born on a sit on a major network at all. I'm obviously well, because it was, it's this co is... content wise, obviously, but just in terms of the initial concept and what it is and the, and the actual, how big the world is, it really, uh, it's incredible. And it, it has to, to everything to do with letting your instincts go and do, you know, Jared and the people putting this together, Jacob, just being that good at kind of conceptualizing an idea and understanding what's funny. It's really, really impressive. And being firm about it, because one of the um, kind of fundamental flaws with this business is often the people that end up in the position to make decisions about what to pull the trigger on haven't necessarily come up through the creative ranks. I'm sure it's the same in the music industry. Mm -hmm. So people are weighing in on what's funny and what isn't, which is already so subjective, but um, people that aren't typically creative types get to decide what gets made and what doesn't. Um, but Jared has a very strong sense and understanding of that show and that world and he's he's uh quick to say i like this but it's not for us or that's not quite tonally on point and that's what you need in a comedy yeah i could see so, that rick i think it's gonna blow up down there for sure <clears throat> yeah i do too because it is distinctly canadian yet those characters are universal and the same can be said for Trailer Park Boys and Corner Gas and all. It's funny when we try to ape American sitcoms, we fail. Yeah, yeah. But when we make things that are distinctly Canadian, those are the things that travel, which is a really good lesson. 
Yeah, well, one thing that's, and if you ever notice anything in history, whether it's a band or a movie or art, when it doesn't remind you of anything else, it gives it that much propulsion and power. Yeah. Because it's only its own thing and it doesn't attach itself to anything. That just makes it like so big, like Battlestar Galactica st- size, because it's not connected. You don't have to do anything but follow your gut, which is so rare. But that's why those kind of things become so popular, because it's it's interesting and it's it's got its own personality on so many levels that it ha- it kind of has to take advantage of all those things inside that that make you like things, you know? <clears throat> Which is why we're shooting Miramichi Vice this fall. Yeah, right? Because it is... I can so see it in my heart and mind. It is an actual cop show like Matlock, but yeah. it is silly like Ace Ventura. I really do like And the like guy it. speaks with this accent, and that's kind of what makes it funny, but it also holds up as a whodunit. Mm-hmm. I am really excited about it. <laughs> Can I wear wraparound sunglasses? Sure. <laughs> Those neons? Um, maybe you should be the greasy, <clears throat> rich American fly fisherman who turns up dead in the first episode. Oh, no, you want a recurring character. <laughs> or it shows up dead a lot. Yeah, it shows up dead every episode. <laughs> or maybe I'm just a, uh, yeah, I'm the guy you can't ever catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bon damn. Sound yeah. like it's time to pay someone a visit. I always see you and I'm like, hey guys, looking for something? <laughs> right? Don't you think it's funny <laughs> that the suspect was not at bowling Friday and Saturday? <laughs> the deceased shows up there. Oh, the bowl. It's so good. How come you rolled a 280 with that ball? <laughs> that <laughs> ball? And it's got a big break in it. <laughs> And he looks behind the couch and he's got the other ball, the guy who died's ball. <laughs> no, I or mean what it, this like, ball. Time for us to go question him at Champlain Mall, but first, let's pop him to Greco. <laughs> you gotta do they a start thing. to get donairs on the way. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta say a thing like where you're pointing out, not not this ball, that ball. Like that's the big sh- the blow up in the show where it's, he's yeah. caught. Your mind isn't the only thing in the gutter. Um, this is the thing, though. This guy has <clears throat> to be ferociously proud of being French and where he comes from so that it never seems for a second like we're making fun of French people, which we're not. No. And he has to be smart, and he has to love what he does. He just is from there, so that's why he talks like that. We also need a device where he has an English partner... So that there's a reason for him to talk in English. Otherwise, it makes no sense. But I know from this pod that people love that voice. <coughs> and it is funny. It just is funny. Well, I mean, Commander Donnie himself, the DJ, is Yeah, that. okay, guys, the only guy is... Uh, I figure that's the same guy, right? Well, maybe he go undercover as a DJ. Yeah, that's it. He's a DJ on the side. Yeah. That's, he likes, because he's always in the, the strip clubs, just to find out what all the toughs are at. Greasy. Right? So he's a cop by day, and by night he's a DJ in a yes. strip club. Done. There you go. Right? Commander Don, he's a commander in the force, and a commander oh at the gosh. club. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a joke. <laughs> But I'm not joking. I think it's really good. That's the best stuff, though. The funniest stuff is the stuff that's like, that makes sense, actually. Well, I remember, I've talked about this before. The first 15 minutes of Ace Ventura, I was like, what is he doing? But he's so committed and never wavers (laughs) that that's why it wins you over. Well, if you think about it, you're like, when has a movie ever been that out that hardcore that fast where the character's just out to lunch like even like the pink panther it would take like an hour for for you know the the really crazy stuff to go now you're right he's like the first shot he's like on a 30 out of 10 but the funny thing is <laughs> when he like, sticks you know, his when head Johnny Depp was playing <laughs> when he's um, sticking his head out the window <laughs> and he's driving oh, it's cuckoo 
<laughs> when Johnny Depp was playing um, <coughs> Captain Jack Sparrow, after the first few days of dailies, the studio was like, what is he doing? He needs to stop. And Johnny Depp was like, you know what? No, trust me. I know what I'm doing. This is how to play the character. And he was obviously right. Yeah. Because they were but saying how it that he did sounds Jim Carrey, up? who wasn't even really a name, yeah, well, convince anyone to let him do that? That's just nuts. Because I think he, I think he, he solidified himself as that person, even on In Living Color. Like when you saw his characters, you're like, man, just do that stuff, do that fireman guy. You know what right. I mean? Like just if I was a smart director, I would be like, that's easy money right there. Yeah, I guess. And that's what they did. They just pointed the camera at him, had a kind of a, a simple but funny script. But it, it's basically that script doesn't mean you don't even know what the hell the plot is. You just remember how funny he is. Well, you kind of do. Well, the Dan Marino stuff and the yeah, like that's pretty funny. Yeah. Right, Dan Marino. <laughs> remember they kidnapped Dan Marino? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, was, and I'm like, I don't remember what it's about, but I just remember that they did uh, kidnap Dan Marino. Here's why Miramichi Vice is funny. It's funny because you can parody cop shows, which are almost a parody of themselves already. Mm -hmm. It's funny because Miramichi Vice is people in a small town making a big deal of their tiny crimes. So it has the mountain out of a molehill uh, foundation, which always makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. And then you can have physical comedy given the geography and terrain there. Oh, it's like slippery mud banks and fly fishing and stuff. And like f getting a guy in the laser tag place. Yeah. <laughs> like going in there. He went in well, there. People going by on ATVs and, <laughs> you know, imagine trying to be undercover in a town of 3,000. Like, everyone would know it was you. Yeah, I know. Playing <laughs> great. And then the, the DJ parties in, like, people's yards and stuff. Yeah. Well, by the way, I pitched a show I like after... The, I like the, like, this, the opportunity of, like, him get, getting into it at... Like, as the DJ, like, having to jump out of the booth and act. I pitched a show called DJ Dougie Doug years ago about this guy who's in his 30s and he wears track suits and his dad wants him to take over the family business, but he's convinced his dad to give him one more year to make it as a DJ. <laughs> give me one so more takes, year. Just takes every gig you would ever get a DJ for, like weddings and bar mitzvahs and kids' parties and community days and parades and whatever i just thought that was such a funny image like a, a hardcore dj playing at the lamest gigs ever i love that but i mean that kind of happens no for sure like if you're a, a popular dj in a city you're doing probably a horrible gig at least twice a month like that well and it has all the things that you want for a sitcom, which is it has regular characters, but yeah. it has new environments every week. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like... You the, never run out of that stuff. For sure. And I like the different situations, right? It's not just... You're do, you're not just doing, like, weddings or something. The fact that you're doing, yeah. like, stupid stuff, like uh, someone's backyard launch for their patio. Like, look at our new patio. And there's a band. And it's a DJ. Yeah. Or dog days outside Sobeys while there's a hot dog barbecue for a women's softball team raising money. Hey, how... Like the weirdest gigs. Like it's the dog days of summer. That's the dog... Like it's the dog days of summer, like our top five. Yeah, we have a but top five dog, dog days of summer. Why don't we kick into the first jam, and that's what it is. It's breaking out the new patio, right? And we okay, got... nice. It. So I'll be DJ Dougie Doug. <laughs> You're DJ Dougie Doug. It's Commander Donnie, isn't it? Um, DJ Dougie Doug in this particular case was not. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna it, try. A, I'm yeah. gonna try just an English guy. Try a new DJ. Yeah. And I got the jam for it, for okay, the first it. Dog Day jam. Oh, you know what I'll be? What? DJ Dougie Doug on remote at Sobeys. Ooh. 
Yeah, for like Wildcat FM. Oh, I like that. Okay. I'm trying to have to... Okay, here we go. So you play the jam and then you throw it to me from the studio. Oh, hold on. I got to get the jams going and gone here. Wait a second, Jonathan. I'm Do trying you know, to wait. I'm trying. The, I'm just excited as all. The old power turned off on the old on. box thing. Ready Are you pair. seated comfortably? Then we'll begin. <clears throat> Paired. Okay, you ready to, for the jam to start? Yeah, so you play the jam, throw to me from studio, and I'll do a live remote. Throw to you from studio? Yeah, you're okay. the DJ in studio, throwing right. to me on location. Hey, doggy dog, you there? I am, yeah, are we gonna do this live hit? Yeah, you ready? Yeah, th okay. you throw it to me, hit the jam and throw it to me, and I got it from there, I'll throw it back to you. Okay, jam's coming right now for you, buddy. Here you go, doggy, you. kill it. Hey everybody, it's DJ Dougie Dog. I'm down here at Sobeys all afternoon long. Your chance to drop by, get a barbecued hot dog for $2, barbecued hamburgers are 3 We'll throw in a Gatorade for your troubles just for stopping by to support the tiny floaty swim team. It's going to be a temperature in the upwards of 28 to 32 degrees, so remember to pound those electrolytes. Stop by and see me. I'm here all afternoon long. It's DJ Dougie Dog. Here's Snap. I got the power on the Wildcat. Hey, are you giving away free hot dogs? No, didn't you hear my hit? The hot dogs are two bucks, but you get a gator, right? Can I have a free hot dog? No. It, you're supporting a swim team, so hey, no. Come over here, Katie, Katie. Come, he's giving free hot dogs at the booth here. No, it's not, but it's not free hot dogs. It's not free. Can I get a hot dog, too? Yeah. Hey, are you the tiny little mask? Yeah. Can I have a hot dog? Hey, hang on one sec. I'm going to cut into this jam and do a, a live hit with this tiny little mosque. DJ Dougie Dog coming to you from Sobeys this afternoon in support of the floaty swim team. Want to ask this tiny little mask, how are you staying cool in the hot, hot heat? I, uh, I, got, any, I got any hot dogs? I have a free hot dog. Hey! No, the, the hot dogs are two bucks. I like freezies, Jumbo. Just because you're small, I'm not gonna give you a free hot dog. Give me a freezy. Mask? Give me Where a did you go? Give me a freezy then. I don't I don't have freezies. I'm just trying to do my job. You asked me how I stay cool. The hell am I it's hot in here? I want a freezy. Anyway, back to you in studio. I was just trying to do a little radio hit and trying to have some fun with you, and you couldn't even roll with me, you tiny little mask. Screw off! I help people out. You don't help me out. Who have you even helped out? Ah, uh, you have no idea. Get out of my face, you tiny little mask. <laughs> Poor tiny little mask getting bullied by the radio guy. Poor TLM, but at the same time, <laughs> he kind of barged right in there. Yeah, he did. Well, he thought there were free hot dogs. Tiny little mask. Tiny little mask. Hey, hold on. This is time. Tiny, tiny little break. We'll take a tiny little break, bud, and oh, we'll have the oh. next. We have four more dog days jams. What's that, Anna? Hey, Anna's back. Time to take a break. Hey, bye, bye. Don't go anywhere, for freak's sakes. Hello. 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 Hey, guess what? Breaking news, Jeremy. But up, but up, but up, up. What is it? Concert, concert, concert alert. We have a concert alert. Concert Tiger alert. Tiger is going to be playing at the Marigold Center in Truro. Whoa, what? Oh, oh, oh. September 27th. We're going to Truro. Here's, in broad strokes, here's what's happening. Some dates are moving. Not being canceled, just moving. Yeah, stuff, stuff switching around so we can make it all one swift thing. Big happy thing. So we're just pushing stuff around a little bit, but we're all that will all come together in the next week or so. But I'm stoked to go to Truro. Yeah, me too. So suffice to say, uh, other East Coast dates will be announced around the Truro date, the yes. last week of September. Yeah. In all three maritime provinces. Yeah. 
Suffice to say, Bo's Oktoberfest is still September 21st and 22nd. Yeah. In Van Cleek Hill, Ontario. Excitement. Happening between Montreal and oh. Ottawa. Wow, I can't wait. Great lineup. Yeah, it and is then a great lineup. Ontario dates are on the move. It'll be uh, early in the fall. We can't wait to get there. We just had to um, figure it out, as they say. As they say. And so, we're going to play the Marigold Center in Truro. And other than my mother-in-law's sorority sisters, I don't know who will come. Yeah, right? Maybe the uh, the Boston Pizza folks there? Yeah, maybe. The guy the guy at the, at the movie theater? Yeah, maybe he'll right? come. The, and then the... Uh, is what the bingo place maybe they'll show up a couple of those well, i talked folks. about this early on in the pod and maybe even the first few episodes here's my favorite guy in truro already okay there's a guy who has done very very well very well yeah he has an antique store and he's had a going out of business sale going for 10 years <laughs> is it that is why? a ruse He's not going out of business. He just thinks that will make people stop in. And when you go in, and I know this because he said it to me at least twice. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just watching the store for my son-in-law. <laughs> no, he says he's not working there? Yeah. <laughs> just watching it for my son-in-law. It's his store. He has no intention of closing, but he's going out of business sales so going for any, a decade. So if anybody asks what's going on, he doesn't know. No, he doesn't have no idea. <laughs> but he'll but he'll be happy to take care of the transaction. Yeah, can you do any better on this? Oh, I don't think he'd be very happy with me. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just, how about okay. You you be that guy. Okay. And I'll be like a guy that comes in there a couple times and he sees Oh yeah, perfect. What if you're stopping in for a fan <laughs> and it's, it's yeah, the dog it's, days? It's hot in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? How you doing? Uh, do, do you work here? I mean, I'm just keeping one eye on it for my son-in-law. He's, he's uh, out to grab a bite, or I don't know where he went, but he said he'd be back. Okay, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave and then come okay. back as, a, as another guy because I'm supposed to remember you. So I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. Hey, how, how are you? You again. Good. Good, how are you? What do you mean again? <laughs> well, don't you remember I bought the uh, box of nails from you last week? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. The, go, the closing out of, the going out of business sale. Yeah, what, what's, uh, so, what are you doing here? What's going on? Is it, it's oh, going out of, just going out of business? Darned if I know. It's uh, my son-in-law's store, and I'm just kind of keeping one eye on it for him. I he just... had to uh, run a couple errands, or uh, he was out somewhere with my daughter and grandkids and closing okay. out, so yeah. I just want to tell you, I've uh, lived in the area for 15 years, and I've, yep. I've never seen this son-in-law you're talking about. Oh, really? Isn't that funny? Uh, what are you looking for today? Anything in particular? Well, it's really hot, so I want to get a fan. Okay, well, the, he has uh, he has these two fans. This one is 99 This one's $98. $98? S- no, sorry, that's the year it was made. Oh. It's um, $19, oh. and the other one's 18 Okay, uh, do you have any other bigger fans? Like those new Dyson ones with the hole in it? Well, no. he has this one over here under this pine drop leaf table. Wow, well, I don't you even sure? Know, to be honest you... with you, I don't even know if he wanted to sell that. I mean, it says How 75 you... on it. You just pulled an owl, and the top went up on that table like that. Um, but the owl was at another table. How do you know? You know this place, don't you? I mean, how? Do, who knows how to do that? The table came up when you pulled the owl's head. Well, I, I look. It's his store. I just do what I'm told. Oh, okay. You know? oh, well, this is a nice fan. Uh, I was actually in the market for some, uh, for some new shoes, actually. Well, I do have these traditional clogs over here that I wore into the store my so- this morning when I w- was covering for my son-in-law. No, I was kind of thinking more kind of leather clogs. Well, I mean, I don't really know what he has around here, but if you poke around, well, there's these. <laughs> what? Does, wait a second. <laughs> that wall just turned around. 
<laughs> I know. Why do you think he's going out of business? And you stepped this on, building's a mess structurally. You stepped in the tail of that that rabbit stuffed rabbit there, and it flipped around, and now there's a whole new array of shoes. Doesn't make sense, does it? The, these are these are perfect. They're my my perfect fit and everything. What price did he put on them? Uh fifty dollars. That's a little steep. I mean, uh, I, if it was if it was my store, I could give you a break. But where it's his, I don't want to want to keep the boss happy. You, you know? Are you kidding me? All right, all right, okay. Uh, hey, you know what? I'm uh, I'm also I'm also looking for 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 a proper a proper hammer. Like uh, like just to hammer nails into a wall, your box of nails. You know the one with the 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 round at the back. It's like ball peen, I guess. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, there's a box of them here. Are you I think. Wait a second. How did you do that? Uh, you, I'm, you I don't know. I'm j I'm just keep keeping one eye on the store for him while he goes out of business. You you pulled a string, and all of a sudden a ball rolled down the side of the over there, and it knocked that water over, and it opened this bin, and it's got all kinds of hammers in it. I did. I pulled a few strings How to get him alone so he could open his store. But Boy, you, uh, you, I don't think it's it's working so well. That's why he's closing it down. I'm, I'll take this hammer. This is, this is exactly what I was looking for. And uh, geez, I'd I, sell it to you for ten, but he's got twenty on it. Well, really? <laughs> well, I guess I'm paying twenty dollars for it. I guess. Guess so. Hey, how about uh, do, you, do you happen to have a do you happen to have a a, a meat slicer around here? I don't, but he might. <laughs> There's one here. Uh, whoa. What? Is this what you mean? You Something just... Like this? Smoke just showed up, and all what? of a sudden, there was a meat slicer in front of me. Well, the weird thing is, it's attached to this pine drop leaf table, so I can't really... I mean, if it was up to me, I'd separate them and sell them separately, but since it's his, I, I don't want to ruffle any feathers, so I guess you'd have to take both. Boy, it's sure hot out there. I'm going to stay around in here a little bit. If was, I noticed another song came on here. It's nice, uh, hey, do you happen to have any, like, my, my pants, I lost a little weight, eh? I was, oh yeah. Do you have any, do you have any pants around here, like, vintage GWGs? Well, I'd give you the pants off my back if it was my store, but all I have oh, is yeah. this entire rack right here. I guess you can't, I, I was about to say, I guess you can't help me at home. You got 1972 to 76 GWGs in my size. Right here. Are you kidding me? I know. Funny how sometimes the universe will give you a sign that you're in the right place. Well, I mean, I, since this place seems to have everything that I need, I mean, uh, uh, there's a car that I've been thinking about, and uh, it's a Corvette from the 68. And oh, really, hold on uh, a sec. Whoa. What are you giving me in this drink here? I'm a little woozy. Whoa. Whoa, oh. We don't really deal in cars oh. except for uh, 68 Corvettes, like this one. Hey, did you just drive me to this car lot? I this don't know. It's my son-in-law's car. <laughs> I don't, I'm not in charge of where it goes. How did, how did I get to this? That's the car! I was telling... It's like a dream! Who owns this <laughs> Who owns this car lot? I, I don't know. You do now, I think. I think you just signed this contract and bought it for me. <laughs> wait a second, my wait, that is my signature. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Jedi mind trick <laughs> antique store guy. <laughs> taking him, taking him for a ride. <laughs> How about slipping up on the pronouns? Oh. I mean, I don't. I mean, he wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. I'm just watching it for my son-in-law in a town this size. He's he set the price. I don't know. <laughs> he said the price. I mean, I could probably do a little better, but I don't want to get in trouble with the boss. You know? <coughs> oh man, that's funny stuff. And by all accounts, this is not someone who needs to do this. That's maybe my favorite part. Oh, I know. Just loves to. Whew. You want to go to the next jam? Yeah. Do you? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Are you, are you feeling? Uh... Is it's just, uh, what's the situation now? Where are we? What's going on, bot? Okay, what if you've had me over for a date, but it's so hot <laughs> that I keep wanting to leave? <laughs> oh, okay. 
you went to all this trouble to make like a turkey dinner or something. Okay, you ready? Your place is too hot. Yeah. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna put on my favorite song. I know it's a little bit serious. It's not like it's just, but it's it's kind of timely. But it's some it's, it's a nice song. So do sit down, sit down. I made you some dinner here, as you see. Uh, Thanks for having me over. I I I mean I made everything. Right? It's, there's a nice ham here. There's some. I even made some... I know you like burgers. I got some burgers. I get the sense you've had the oven on all day. I have. I also have some... Uh, I. It took me a, quite a while, about three days, but I have some uh, brisket right here if you want. There you go. So this was prepared indoors as well. Yeah, sorry. It's a little hot. I know it's 40 degrees outside and also maybe... Do you 40, find? Maybe 40 and 45 in here. I don't know. That's why I'm I put regretting this... the moment I decided to wear a sky blue linen shirt. That's why I put on this song to cool myself off. I feel like the valley between my breasts is like a river. It's like hey, a let... bay of fundy. Do you want me to blow on you? Would you mind? <laughs> I uh, got one of those new Dyson fans with the holes in it. The no hole, the no blades. What? Please, tr please plug that in and turn it on. Well, I don't really have... There's nothing that really reaches in the kitchen. Well, I would suggest that then we could maybe eat in the living room. Okay, grab your plate, Mortimer. Do you know what I don't particularly feel like as much trouble as you've gone to is a hot meal on a hot day like this. I feel like sticking freezies on my nipples. Well, I got some uh, pina coladas. You want a pina colada? If you Do like you like pina, pina coladas? If you like and pina, getting caught in the rain? Pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. You wanna dance? No, I'm afraid we might stick together with our natural juices and be unable to be pried apart. That sounds kind of fun, though. Hey, it sounds kind of fun if we had any way of cooling off. I think it's the... too hot to even think about intimacy. I know that's what it said in your Tinder profile. Mortimer, I, I think the power just went out. Does that mean it's going to get hotter in here? I'd say it might. Uh, do you want to? Well, I mean, it's ho it's hotter outside now. Um. Do you want to go to my mother's cottage where she has a unicorn floaty? <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Can we go there? We can slide into the donut hole together. And Whoa. joint kick our way to the middle of the lake. What What's going on, Morty? Have you taken something? No, it's just the heat is getting to me. What was... I was there, just is there even a Is there even a place? Is there even a place? our bathing suit areas together in cold water. Where's your, where's your place? The water? Is the lake close? Morty? Mommy. Morty? Morty! Mommy. Morty! Oh my god, I'm gonna pour some water on his face. Morty! Why did you pour hot water on my oh, face? It wasn't hot, that's just room temperature. Well, it's hot in here, so I guess it is hot water. I it's believe it was Nellie who once said, it's getting hot in her. The power went out! And Do you know what? I think we should just cut our losses on this, and I'm going to go swipe right a few more times and see if anyone has AC or a heat pump. Oh, the power's back on. It's Drake's on. Is this the In Your Feelings Challenge? <laughs> What's that? You know when masks walk beside their car and try to do the oh, dance steps? Oh. Yeah, what is that? That's the In Your Feelings Challenge. Oh, that is what that is? Like, KK, do you love me? Do and you, you get... need me? Well, you'll never ever leave. I'm beside me. I'm a thingy. And you, people get out of their cars and try to do this, like, walk dance beside their car. Oh, uh, that's why I've seen people, like, getting hurt. That's all I see is viral. Cars bumping into trees and stuff. People getting run over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know about the run over part. People are getting run over? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, and a uh, woman dropped her purse while she was doing it, and these grease balls on a moped stole it. 
That's up there with like uh, the tides thing. It's like where you die at. Like, good chance you die if you do the thing. I think we're at the point in our technological history where the thing isn't what's interesting. People are just waiting for the flip of the thing, which is people trying to do the thing yeah. and then getting hurt. Yeah, like you know the what I mean? ride ride down a set of stairs on a wheelchair hashtag. Yeah. Like what? But the I don't know, what? and now I'm sounding like Grams. I don't know why in my feelings challenge. I don't know what's called the in my feelings challenge. Maybe the song is called in my feelings. Is it in your feelings? In, in my, my feelings, feelings challenge. Yeah. I'll tell you what your feelings are gonna be beat up by hitting rocks on the yeah. side of the road. So now there are You're some driving? Like, is it driving? Like the driver getting out or the passenger? Well, I've seen both. Oh man. But sometimes like now sometimes it's a cow, then it's a dog, sometimes it's like parents and their kids. Whoa. It's a whole thing. It is a whole thing. Yeah. What's, I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to do that one. I think the last one I did was the ice bucket, and that actually was for a reason. Yeah. There's, like, no beneficiary to the in my feelings, right? Was it painful? The ice bucket? Yeah. Nah. It's fine. It's nothing. My really? Dad, it didn't hurt? Ronnie did it with me, Pops. Did great. he really? Yeah. I, fi I filled up a big drum and poured it on my head. Like a bass drum? It was a big floor tom. Whoa. Yeah. Um. So it didn't hurt because it's designed to feel like it feels, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't at all. It's actually, it was summer, so it didn't really, it was just refreshing, actually. Well, that's kind of nice. You know, what's hard is like sitting in an ice bucket. That's hard. One of those big ice baths. Whew. You ever try that? <laughs> yeah, like the guy in PEI? <laughs> well, yeah, but like, yeah, you ever do that? That's cold. I don't, um, that's, that's not my, that's tough. Uh, but apparently it's really good for you doing that. Sitting in an ice bath. Well, don't athletes do that? Well, if, if you have any inflammation, ice will take care of that. That's why if someone breaks something, they put ice instantly on it. Or some people have had their back saved by, uh, there's I think there's a new way they do it in the NFL, actually, where they, they have a thing that's like freezing. And it's if there's any kind of issues where they need to take care of the inflammation, they put ice on it and have saved people's lives or saved massive injuries because of ice quick enough. Really? Yeah, getting it there right away. Because I went over on my ankle probably eight days ago, and it really hurts. So I've been putting the magic bag on it with heat. You're saying I should put it in an ice thing. Well, I don't know. Maybe a heat's in a similar thing, but ice is definitely good. I'm, I'm no doctor, though. I'm going to jam my ankle in an ice bath, bud. Well, you, want, you jammed your ankle. You could have sprained it. Well, that could be months before you're feeling better. Like a sprained ankle, boy, ain't nothing to play with. No, it isn't. I was playing golf with our, our buddy Lairdo. You know Lairdo? Yeah. At, at the wonderful National Golf yeah. Club. On the fourth hole, one of my favorite holes in the whole world, uh, I pushed it right over the creek into the into the, the uh, Don, Donald Trump's hair. Basically, that you know that really wrap over fescue that's all kind yeah, of, <laughs> <just> like that <laughs> where the ball's like gone. Where I'm like, forget it, <laughs> like it's it's in Donald Trump's hair. I'm done. Forget it. <laughs> so he, but he's like, no, I'm gonna. I saw where it went, and he jumps like the whole, the whole creek from a rock, and he, I hear almost a crack, but not quite like a, a just a click when he hits the other side with his foot. Ouch. And he was like, God! And he kind of put it into place. But ever ever since, like, it, and he felt it never hurt to the point where I think he had it looked at and it was a, like a real, a bad sprain or whatever. But uh, he's had, he just kind of dealt with it. And he, it's still to this day, and that was like over 10 years ago when that happened. Wow. And it still hurt. Like, not, like on and off, if it's, I guess that's how those kind of things go. If it's really bad. 
it'll just kind of come back when it's raining or well i have a theory that a body deals with pressure. a break better than a sprain because yeah. if it's a break your body's like okay all hands on deck let's get this fixed yeah if it's a sprain it's like meh all right it's yeah. not really urgent mm. Mm. well it, yeah right because it's not it, it's not fixable in that way there's nothing broken so it has to it's more nerves around it i guess right mm. i don't know I ain't know no either, but I'm going to put it in ice. I know that for free. Hey, hey, I ain't no hey, doctor. Hey, by the way, special thanks to Toolsy for doing Taggart and Toolsy, the third segment of last episode. Yeah, that was fun. I had a little uh, t- time with Toolsy on the, uh, in Muskoka. Oh, my was gosh. Good. Why wasn't it called Toolsy time? Toolsy time. Always. Something special for the kids. He was a bod. He's always a bod when, he, when we hang out. It's always He's a good time. He's the buddiest. It's, it, it's going to be definitely like a, the next year will be the third annual. Dan O'Toole, Seeing Snakes. Awesome. Seeing O'Toole Snakes. Time. Seeing Snakes Spectacular with Dan O'Toole. Good chat, Bob. Good chat, Bob.